Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is a video that I know many of you have been asking about since I recently upgraded the PC to a higher spec rig. So first of all, what am I now running? Well, I'm now running a Ryzen 7 3 7000X. We have an RTX 3060 we have 32 gigabytes of RAM and quite importantly as well, we also now have an SSD, whereas prior to this upgrade, I was on a uh, old fashioned hard disk drive. I think it also important to point out as well that all the video is done in 1080. I've had this new rig now for a couple of weeks and in that time I've kind of been fine tuning different settings that I can use, pushing it to its limit at times, but basically the main thing that we want is a stable simulator. We all know what Microsoft Flight Simulator is like, if it doesn't like something, chances are it is going to crash the desktop and give you strange results. And of course we also want to preserve the longevity of the system. Another thing to remember, of course, that everything you see here and when we're doing live streams is exactly that, a live stream, which places extra drain and power resources being used by the computer, which ordinarily, if you just play Microsoft Flight Simulator at home, you won't be doing. So in this video, I'm going to take you through my current graphics settings that I use, and I'm also going to have a look at the Phoenix aircraft and the different settings I use within the Phoenix manager to try and get the best out of the new system whilst keeping the graphics as high as possible, maintaining a stable flight simulator. What we have to remember as well, of course, is that so many different things affect the graphic settings and your FPS. For example, if you're flying at a big airport and you have got AIG traffic installed or live traffic turned on by default, or you're flying on VATSIM traffic, all of this places quite a significant extra load in your flight sim and so your FPS is going to drop. If you're flying in highly complex scenery airports, such as the mega airport Brussels, as shown here, it is visually stunning, unbelievably impressive, but again, it doesn't matter what cards you have, what specs you've got for your system, it is still going to cause a drop in FES. So it's trying to find that sweet spot for your card, your graphics, and your system, which can take a little bit of fine tuning. Whenever I'm testing out my performance and the FPS, I always try to do the same bench test every time, which for me is Manhattan, cloudless skies, no AI traffic or anything daft like that. And as you can see here, you've got around 50, 55, sometimes creeps up a little bit higher than that, but basically we're looking a good solid uh, 50 FPS or more, which is more than, uh, more than good enough. Take away the cloudless skies and throw in some clouds and you would expect to see a little drop and yeah, perhaps very slightly, maybe one or two frames and as you uh, increase the view here so the, uh, the draw distance is set even further, again you can see that it uh, just drops, occasionally dropping below that 50 FPS, but realistically this is far better than I actually require, so very happy with uh, the initial bench test of the new system. Now, for those of you familiar with the channel, you'll know that London Gatwick has been the bane of my life for the last couple of months with numerous crash to desktops when trying to depart from here or uh, arrive here. 40 FPS at the moment, and that is before I throw in any uh, VATSIM traffic, which I'm just doing now. We can see that appearing on screen. 40 FPS then, that's a good 10 to 15 FPS less than I was getting in Manhattan. So clearly this amazing freeware scenery available from flightsim.to is whilst wonderful, very, very demanding. Throw in the uh, VATSIM traffic and we're now dropping down as low as 34, 35. So clearly this requires a good PC with the graphics finely tuned to get a good balanced performance. Let's have a look first then at the settings that I use in the Phoenix. So here I am on the ground at that London Gatwick Airport, we're obviously all powered up. I've cleared all the weather and all the, uh, all the traffic out. You can see I'm holding around 33, 34. Let's go ahead and have a look at changing the display quality. So if I change this uh, to quality, we just obviously need to give that a second to uh, to sort itself out. And uh, yeah, just looking at that, it's probably it's probably dropped a frame, hasn't it? If we then go to performance, we would obviously expect this to increase once it's had a moment to uh, to settle. And uh, yeah, it's now on the higher side of 30, uh, 34, getting up towards 35. So not a massive difference which is why realistically balance is probably the uh, the best 
If I go to the render displays, then you can see that at the moment, this is set using the, the GPU. Let's go ahead and change that to use the, the CPU. Uh, so we'll see how that affects that from 34. Give that a moment to uh, settle 34. Again, that's probably gained a frame or, uh, or two. Let's pop that back then to the, uh, to the GPU. And once again, give that a moment. This is more or less, I think, where we were right at the start. Yeah, around about uh, 34, uh, just occasionally knocking up into uh, into 35 this is a great thing that you can do with the Phoenix because it's going to be different for every single uh, every single system now you can go ahead and you can change these kind of on the fly and monitor the FPS changes just as we've done uh, over the last minute or so so you can go ahead and see which one works best for you I'd be interested to know down in the comments below let me know what uh, is your best configuration for that now the Phoenix also allows you to save some FPS by turning on the uh, the cabin views or turning them off. At the moment when I've got my cabin view turned on and I'm looking at it, it's around again 33, 34. If I just turn the cabin visibility off, we uh, instantly see a little boost there in the top right hand corner. Let's go back and have a look back as well. And yeah, you can see in that same view, it has indeed given us a boost of uh, two, maybe three uh, frames. So if you are running a lower spec system, this is again a great opportunity. It does mean that if you're using custom views, it, you're, you're losing kind of the camera view around there. But again, you're still getting some decent wing views. So really, I think in terms of uh, performance and stability, that is a very small price to pay. So let's take a look now then at what my graphics settings are in the sim. By now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what all of the various settings do. So I'm not going to go through and narrate each of these. I'm just going to leave these on screen for you to uh, take stock and have a look. But you can see straight away, I do not have everything set to ultra. There are certain things that I feel don't realistically need to be set to ultra. Things like grass, bushes, trees, even the buildings. Uh, a lot of my flying is airliner flying, so I don't need these turned on. If I'm perhaps just messing around a little G, a aircraft then I might turn these up and turn a couple of other things down and it's all about keeping things nicely uh, nicely balanced one thing I will mention though is that bear in mind these are my settings because I stream a lot of the time which obviously means that the GPU is already working hard so if I am not streaming I can push these a little bit further higher up maybe pop most things on ultra and just drop a few minor things down as well and monitor how the performance is. It's also very important to note that here on the traffic tab you'll probably get a good FPS increase if you drop the amount of road vehicles, ships, ferries, etc. But road vehicles in particular play a massive uh, part in reducing your FPS, as does the airport vehicle density and worker density. Great to see visually, but again, it's all about balance. As you are going through and tinkering with your settings, I think it's quite important to just monitor the performance of the GPU, CPU, etc. In particular, the GPU. You don't want your temperature spiking up too high. And as you can see here at the moment, uh, the workload is kind of in the mid 70%. Temperature's doing all right, but I've not actually had it running for very long. It's perhaps only been on for the last uh, 45 minutes or so. If I'm doing a transatlantic flight or something like that, the GPU is obviously going to be running for much much longer getting warmer and warmer depending on how your cooling system is implemented let's have a look then now at my nvidia control panel because i know a few people want to perhaps see how high i have this set up interestingly enough for this video and this is really important for this video i actually uncapped my frames what i always have turned on is my maximum frame rate limiter here in the nvidia control panel and i always have it set to 30. Now, obviously, that is perhaps much less than you guys would want to see. But realistically, when I'm streaming, flying and doing lots of setup with things like the Phoenix, which is a highly complicated aircraft, 30 FPS is absolutely fine. I feel for Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'd be interested to know again, leave a comment down below. Are you happy to limit your flight sim to 30 FPS or do you want faster and faster to push things to be as best as it can be visually? Personally, I think 30 fps is more than enough and it gives you much better stability and also prolongs the life of your gpu 
So there you have it. Those are my settings for both Microsoft Flight Simulator, my NVIDIA control panel here on the new rig for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any suggestions or anything you've tried that's really worked, help make things more stable or give you a slightly better performance out of the uh, hardware that you've got, then please do get in touch. Leave a message down below. I'm sure myself as well as many others would like to hear any anything you guys may be able to add. If you have found this video useful, please do leave a like button. It makes a huge difference to the channel. So thank you so much for everybody who has already done that. And of course, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and of course our live streamed content. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again in the next video. Bye bye for now.